Um, so yeah, wrapping us up today is Shauna. I don't know if anyone else was lucky enough to be at a recent Women in Tech event mm -hmm. around uh, non-tech into tech, so folk who didn't come through the more traditional cliched backgrounds, and Shauna was one of the speakers in that. Um, very impressed, so looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Um, just making sure everyone can hear me okay? Cool. Um, so yeah, I just want to firstly say thank you to Danielle, Claire, everyone else whose names I don't know, Rachel, um, thank you for putting on this event today and for like accepting my talk as well. Um, and so my name is Shona. I work for Detactics, which my colleague Fiona had talked about earlier and give a bit of background. Um, so we're a data quality company. I've been there for about four years. I'm a senior data engineer and for the past four years, I've basically been working on the same project, which is semantic analysis of free text, mainly using regular expressions. Um, I, yeah, we'll start. So what is semantic analysis? Uh, the huge meaning is that it's the process of drawing meaning from text. So it allows computers to understand and interpret sentences, paragraphs, or whole documents by analyzing the grammatical structure and identifying relationships between words. And why is it necessary? So wh why is it important? It's because language is complex. Uh, even humans don't understand context unless it's provided. So for example, the word orange, it could mean anything. Unless you have context around it, you wouldn't know what it means. So it could mean the color, the fruit, or a city in Florida. The word date could be a day of the month, the fruit, or an evening out. So why is it relevant? Why am I talking about it today? Um, so since 2018, the tactics have been working with UK police constabularies to develop a semantic analysis process that automates decision making when identifying crime. And the gradual development of the knife crime process has now resulted in proven methodology that is repeatable for other crime types and extendable to other domains. So we, we started the knife crime process uh, with this one crime type and now it's been used in production and the statistics are being used in um, official national of Office of National Statistics. And uh, yeah, you'll see it in like in BBC News and things like this where it's underreported crime in some uh, England or Wales constabulary. That's us. And the problem, a bit of background into the problem, it's the quality of crime data as reported from police ferries. So across England and Wales, you'll get some forces are better at reporting than others. So 43 police forces, they report figures to the Home Office in different times throughout the year. There's uh, lots of misreported figures in terms of total number of a particular crime. So we started with knife crime and we're gonna roll out to other different types. Uh, and then there's two main record management systems that the forces use, each with their own unique data model. So it's different data and different forces and we're trying to, yeah, trying to standardize and find the right number of crimes in that. There's also lots of human errors in the data. So free text descriptions, when a police officer is typing in the, uh, the witness statement in the logs, there'll be misspelling, so there'll be things they don't know. Um, yeah. So without accurate data, it is impossible to understand the trend in knife crime. Knife crimes aren't flagged consistently. The information might be in any one of eight fields, also across multiple files. Each quarter, the forces send the knife crime stats to the Home Office and fulfilling the reporting requirement means an analyst must manually search through these different fields, these different files, um, which takes a lot of effort. So it can be up to 36 days of work per year. And there's no automated mechanism to put the flags back into the source system. So that takes more time as well. And also there's no uh, way of combining this with other forces. So this is just pretty much one force does this. It's separate from all the others. So our solution that we've been working on, not just me and my colleagues as well, um, so we profile clients and standardize the data before it's received at the Home Office Data Hub, uh, ideally rolled out to all forces in England and Wales, which reduces the need for manual effort and increases eff efficiency and accuracy. Uh, so our, how we do this, it's a four-step methodology. So first, we cleanse, filter, and index the data. Uh, this is the second one is most important. It's text standardization and assigning labels to, to the text. And we classify those labels based on if it's high confidence, low confidence, or we can reject it. And then we consolidate the results into various different reports. Uh, regular expressions are used in all of these steps. So step one is about um, cleansing, formatting, and validating the data uh, to create a working candidate set. So we can, we can begin the semantic analysis. 
So step one really is filtering down the list of all crimes, uh, looking for keywords and phrases. So for the knife crime, we get like a, a month's worth of all crime data. We're really interested in the knife crime ones or ones related to knife. So we search for word knife and other different searches and other checks, um, and that'll be our candidate set from all of it. Step two is text standardization using regular expressions. So we can't, we want to standardize the English language basically, which is um, harder than it sounds. So we have a list of, uh, of people here. So suspect, friend, stranger, or victim. So we want to standardize that all just to person. So we want any type of person, any occupation, that just becomes person. Blade, knives, machete, or cleaver with their misspellings because there's, there's you get typos. Um, we want to just standardize, standardize that to knife. And this is the basis of our dictionaries. We've got a list of people, list of knives, we'll have a list of verbs, prepositions, they'll all be standardized. Making use of negative and positive look-aheads or look-behinds. So for example, we just want the word blade, but it can be preceded by shoulder or ruler blades. So we don't want that to come through as a knife. So we can use uh, a negative look behind. So the word preceding the blade, we're just we're going to cancel that out so that won't come through. So then we have shoulder blade, roller blades, and blade. So only blade is highlighted so that will only get um, standardized to knife. And then making use of capture groups as well. So once we have standardized the whole sentence, uh, we can use capture groups, which is the bit in between the brackets. Um, so then instead of having like a row for every different type of verb, which is the fourth one there, we can just use the capture group, which is the dollar sign four, so it'll pick up any different type of verb. And then part two of step two is uh, assigning labels to what we've just standardized. So an example of a free text field, this is dummy data, it's not based on real data, um, is during a domestic incident, offender stabs IP with a long shiny knife. Uh, IP here stands for injured party. So we can assign the label here uh, as person stabs person with a knife. The vendor's been standardized to person, IP's been standardized to person. We have a list of verbs. Um, so stabbed, stabbing, stabs, just gets changed to the word stab, with a knife. Second example here would be a drunk male has been arguing with father. During the incident, a vendor has managed to grab a knife from the kitchen, which the victim took off him. So that will get a label of grabs knife. Step three is uh, classifying these labels now. So the first label here is a uh, person stabs person with a knife. It's pretty much clear cut knife crime. So we can give that a high confidence. The second one is uh, just grabs knife. So we're not entirely clear what he, did, he or she did with the knife. So that can just be uh, a low confidence, which will require manual review from a human. And then step four of the, uh, the methodology is results consolidation. So we've got our high confidence and rejected uh, records don't need to be reviewed and then the low confidence one, which are, are a bit ambiguous and we'll need someone to check them. And we've got a metrics report and then various other reports for stakeholders. To summarize then the last few slides, semantic analysis involves three key steps. So using dictionaries of terminology to identify and standardize relevant text items into ingredients. So that will be your, your building the dictionaries of verbs, people, knives, yeah, all that. And then using regular expressions to generate the labels based on those ingredients. And then classifying them as high, lower, or rejected. So um, the benefit is that this is cumulative. So once you do it for one crime type, you don't have to start again from scratch from the next one. You, so you can reuse that list of people and list of verbs and just add them to it. Um, so it's, uh, that's all a bit confusing when you're talking through it really quickly. So I'm going to do a step-by-step -step example. Um, so. This free text here says during a domestic incident, offender stabs IP with a long shiny knife. Offender and IP gets changed to person and the knife gets standardized to knife. Then the verb stabs becomes stab and then with is the preposition here. And then we ignore everything else in the sentence is just clutter. And then that will be our label, that's what we look for. So person stab person preposition knife becomes the label. Person stabs person with a knife, which is classified as high confidence. The user doesn't need to review it, that goes through. The benefits of this is reduced manual effort. So over 90% of manually identified records are now flagged as high confidence automatically. Um, the user doesn't need to look at them. The data quality process is now automated, reducing time from days to minutes. So a user could have spent two or three days a month looking at this. Now our process runs in about eight minutes oh, with fairly high accuracy as well. 
um, data standardization. So across the 43 forces, one force may have been saying, yes, this record would be a knife crime, but another force disagrees. So now it's just, it's consistent across the whole of uh, England and Wales. And then we've also identified other records that the force may have missed previously. So it's more accurate overall. Consistent categorization. So the forces now understand the, and report the crime the same way. It's more accurate and consistent across the forces. And probably a really important one is reduced psychological impacts, where it reduces the time that a user needs to manually check all these um, crimes, some of which may be distressing. So the limitations of our process, it's not perfect, it could be better. Um, it's a very manual process where the dictionaries are built up over time by a data engineer. So when we first started, I was reading through thousands and thousands of records, um, trying to ad identify all the different types of knives and verbs and different ways you can type someone, stab someone with a knife. Um, local subject matter expertise um, is needed, and it, which puts additional strain on already overstretched resources. So with the use of natural language processing and machine learning, this could be achieved much quicker. So improvements that could be made. Reducing the manual effort of reading through text to find meaning. Algorithms learn to perform tasks based on training data they are fed and adjust their methods as more data is processed. Uh, algorithms refine their own rules through repeated processing and learning. You could, we can train machines to make accurate predictions based on past results. And identifying trends over time, the algorithm can suggest additions and improve underlying dictionaries. So if a user is constantly flagging this record as, yes, this is always a knife, if it's a new type of weapon we don't have already in our dictionaries, um, that can be added automatically, which will improve it. So next steps is uh, ideally rolling out to all police forces. I think most of them have signed up to knife crime already. So um, also developing processes for new crime types. Uh, I've been working on the domestic abuse one, um, so over the last year and a half, and that which is nearly ready to go. There's also a CSA, which is child sexual abuse, which would also really help reduce that psychological impact of reading those records all the time. And uh, hate crime is being developed by my colleague, and also there's online crime violence against women and girls that are in the mix. Um, so what, and also inclusion of NLP and ML would be a great, yeah, reduce a lot of time, make it more accurate. I flew through that, so <laughs> that was much quicker than I thought it would be. Um, so thank you, and I will take 15 minutes of questions, thank you. <laughs> Who's got some? Oh, here we go. Okay, so it seems like it'd be a lot easier to do that up front for like the reporting officer to just have a tick box saying, is this a knife crime? Why are you doing all of this, you know, labor intensive data analysis afterwards instead of having it done up front like that? Yeah, they do have that box, but it's not always used in the most consistent way. So maybe they've ticked that um, knife crime box, but in the free text, they actually said, actually, no, he didn't use a knife. Um, so it's, it's, the data quality is per from the source, so that's what we're trying to fix after. Um, ideally, we could train police officers to just type in just the labels that I'm looking for, and that would be perfect. <laughs> but sometimes they say it was like it was with a knife, but then this other person said it wasn't with a knife. And that ambiguous text would cause it to go for a manual review. Okay, so what I suggest is already there, it's just not working. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, it keeps me in you. a job, you know. Anyone else? Oh, stop. can I squeeze past you? Sorry, just please. Hi, uh, great talk. Um, I just have a question around uh, some of the, obviously the use cases that you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. Some of that data is quite sensitive. How do you find working on it? And is there like measures in place to protect you as a person who's training these algorithms with this data? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, for knife crime, I'm going to say, like, from my perspective, it's, not as bad as the CSA. Um, so they, my company and the Home Office, they've given me the option for, um, for you know, therapy and mental health checks and that and keep me up to date. So like every year I'll do that. I don't feel like I need it. And also because it's not going into the details of the crime, it's really just a police officer summary. It's, it's short sentences, which you can kind of deal with and, and get over it. Um, but yeah, it is a serious consideration. Thank you. Any others? Oh, yep. Yeah. I have a light. Right. Just a quick question here that uh, 
what's the use case of these uh, as you said there is a benefit that uh, for uh, referring back to the old cases etc so uh, is it just for the analysis purpose or because there would be uh, some hidden part of the case which in the description so th- these are very high level uh, word words or dictionary items you have extracted from the length of the data but there could be some other clues so is it been used by police officers or how the use case work here um the are use case of regular expressions in the free text so this the output of this is it been used by the police officers oh, yes so um uh, it's been used now so uh we are more accurate in flagging we can also update their source systems with um, the accurate flags and then so it's correct at the source it's correct going to home office and it's also correct going to the office of national S- statistics um so we're getting more accurate numbers and what details the this kind of data intelligence used for is it just for reporting purpose or is it actually for the investigation purpose it's just for reporting purposes now um mm-hmm. I, for the sensitive ones like domestic abuse um there there'll be th- things like victim safeguarding so if they miss a record is very serious and they would need to go out and follow the checks um so because it's not in production yet i'm not sure what they're going to do with it but i'm i'm pretty sure they'll know to that as a report it's very interesting so the initial i'm never aware of Thank you for that. Thank you. Great. Anyone else? Cool. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Yep, yeah, where's so close. Oh, thank you. It's been a long day. Hi. Ah, uh, you mentioned using MLP. I'm uh, sorry, NLP and ML. Have you started introducing that into your process, or is that something that's in the future? That is going to come in the future. So, as I said, my colleague uh, Fiona and her she is the um the lead of the AI and ML team at the tactics so she has staff now that are going to be working on this and hopefully implement it um definitely not my area of expertise but I'm super interested in it so I'll be working closely with them right. and you'll be using the stuff that you manually processed as training for your last book yeah because uh, it's been like yeah. tens of thousands of records so I'm pretty much an expert in, in this <laughs> now um but yeah we've got a, a really good set of of training data already to feed into it and then we can build on that. Okay. Anyone? Oh, I'm going to bolster. Yeah, I can <laughs> put it on a sec. Yeah. You've got this time. Thank you. So you're sampling off the um, Officer provided summaries, and one of the things that you flagged up was that you're doing manual reviews on the low confidence knife crime assessments. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to your question about the summaries, if an officer um, mis summarizes a report mm-hmm. um, uh, and effectively says there is an attack on person X and never has anything that matches your knife tick box, um, you'd said that the low confidence positives it like low confidence in the knife assessments but they went through a manual review is there any sampling or secondary um like false and negative review that you're doing on because as, as you said like you maybe don't have full access to the description text Does that make sense yeah so checking that the rejected records are actually rejected and yeah. confidence are actually high confidence even if the summary might not actually have any positive inference so your algorithms are correct yeah but you're missing a knife crime because it was mis summarized by the author Yeah, so we don't just go on free text. That was um the focus of this presentation. But there's also other flags we use. So there's a, an a two weapons used fields. So if there's a knife in either one of those, it'll it'll be um upgraded in confidence. There's also the officer event log, so that is the huge list of uh of everything that's happened, so every witness they've interviewed, every time they went out and checked something. Um that would be lower confidence because sometimes they write in this did the victim use a knife which is like a question and I'll come up as victim or you know suspect use a knife um so it can be used and that can be in the low confidence so it's like it's not like we missed it um yeah so that it's not just one free text field it's actually two plus the officer event log plus all the flags and yeah as, as much information as we can to get it pretty yep i know these are doing this on purpose now. If you could just group <laughs> together, um, that'd be great. Uh, I will confess, I, I deliberately thought of a question to bring you back across here. <laughs> um, you're doing all of this with regexes? Yeah. Um, two questions. One is, 
how big do your regexes get? And the second is, are those all human generated or have you built yourself tools to help build those up to make the process easier for yourself? If I was smart enough to do that, I definitely would have done it by night. But no, they are, it's not just me as well, so it's my colleagues um, building it up. So um, yeah, they're, they're pretty much hand generated. Every time I read through a record, it gets added to a list. And myself and my colleague Sean here has come to support me today. Um, so we've been building this up over four years and to add to this list. That's why I'm really hoping um, machine learning and NLP can be used, um, so we don't have to keep doing this. Any more? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, thank you, Shauna. You can see, obviously, um, got a lot of work in for us, a lot of questions. Yes, so thank, thank you. Very you. Much, everyone.